Hey there, Beertubers. Welcome back to another beer review here on the Beer Patrol. I'm Average Joe, and today I'm going to be reviewing a beer from Omnipolo out of Stockholm, Sweden, and this is their Perdramas. So, <laughs> the label art on this can is fantastic. It's so fantastic that behind me, on the pretentious background of cans and bottles, you can already see it's up there. That's because, full disclosure, I've had this beer before. Actually, I brought this beer to a beer share. I only had about three or four ounces, but I loved it so much that I deemed it worthy enough to put it back here on the pretentious wall of cans and bottles. So, uh, yeah, high praise from me. Uh, but then again, I had it at a beer share. I don't know how many beers deep I was at that point, but I wanted to give it a proper review on a fresh palate just to see if it was as good as I remember it being, and that's what we're going to do today. So, this beer comes in at 10.5% alcohol by volume, and it is an imperial stout brewed with vanilla, cocoa nibs, and wait for it, cookie dough that was deep fried over charcoal fire. Yeah, that sounds pretty fantastic. And the uh, description here on the can is what kind of sold me on this beer originally. Uh, they describe this as a graham cracker, chocolate chunk, caramel bar stout. I mean, yeah, I'm trying to let that sink in. It sounds amazing. Yes, it's a pastry stout. Yes, this is made for people who have weak palates and uh, don't enjoy real beer. You know what? I enjoy real beer, and I still like pastry stouts and New England style IPAs, uh, but like anything else, in moderation. So I thought today I would uh, get maybe a little bit of the diabetes in me. Um, so the ingredients on here, because this can... Well, I guess this beer, uh, but the beer in this can was actually brewed in Toronto, Ontario, Canada at Brunswick, uh, no, uh, Brunswick Beer Works. That's what it is. I've never heard of them before, but that's where it's brewed because Omnipolo is a gypsy brewer and uh, they decided to brew this at the Toronto location and they released this in LCBOs in Ontario, Canada. So pretty cool. And because, like I said, it's in Canada, ingredients on the can, water, hops, barley, wheat, oats, coffee, vanilla, cocoa, natural graham cracker flavors, and caramel. There's a lot going on. The beer was canned on July 12th of 2017, and I guess it would make this about nine months old. Uh, that can I had over there was about six months old when I tried it, and it was phenomenal. So three extra months, I don't know. Three extra months could go one way, could go another way. We'll see. Anyway, I'm going to give this a proper pour, and we're going to get into it. So this beer was provided to me along with that beer by my good Canadian friend, Sean. Uh, so thank you very much, Sean, not only for that one that we already drank and was awesome, but hopefully for this one, which should be awesome. But I don't know, my palate's stupid. And uh, again, this is on a fresh palate. We'll see if it's as good as I thought it was. I thought it was pretty damn good. Give it a pour here. Yeah, this is pouring out like uh, motor oil because that's how this beer is. Just going to pour enough to get my nose in there. And we'll let you guys take a look at the awesome label. So there's the beer. Um, as you can as you can see, yeah, it's an Imperial Stout. It looks like motor oil. Um, no light getting through that. Has about a finger of a dark brown head. This is like one of the darkest heads I've ever seen on a beer uh, that was, what is it, 10.5%, like I said. Uh, I don't think I could find the IBUs. And if I did, it wouldn't matter anyway, right? Uh, but yeah, 10.5% alcohol by volume. That's yeah, a big Imperial Stout, but like this head is reminiscent of beers that are, are above 15%, at least for me. But yeah, it looks it looks dark. It looks very inviting. And I got a whiff of it when I poured it out. It smells amazing. So let me get the aroma on here because I cannot wait. Yeah, oh my Christ. <laughs> I'm not shitting you. This is one of the best smelling beers I have ever smelled in my life. No joke. I mean, I don't know how many beers I've, I, I've uh, drank in my life, whatever. 3,000. This is top five of all time in terms of nose. It's so complex that I'm going to try to describe it for you, but my hashtag baby palette and certainly this nose is probably incapable. Right up front, you're hit with all the sweetness. If you do not like dessert style beers, because this is a pastry style, you're not gonna like this beer. Um, and again, I haven't even drank yet, just telling you from the aroma, but you know, reminiscing in my head about drinking it three months ago, it's all coming back to me. Um, 
there's so much going on. There is a ton of caramel, toffee, confectionery sugar. There's a bit of coffee underneath it. Kind of brings a slight like bittering, roasty component. But for the most part, this is all about the sweetness of this beer. Vanilla, uh, that that co that cookie dough that was deep fried over the charcoal fire, is just giving off this generic, generic cookie dough flavor. I couldn't tell you it's cookie dough, but I could tell you it's something sweet. Uh, it's some kind of dessert in there uh, that that's just more so than like vanilla and cocoa and caramel. Yeah, I mean. Again, they call it a graham cracker, chocolate chunk, caramel bar stout. Everything they say is in here. Graham cracker isn't as present. Let me take that back. Graham cracker isn't as present as the rest. But that said, I don't even care. I really don't. That's how good this beer smells. This is just, like I said, top five aromas of all time for me right now, without question. Um, I'm done talking about it. I want to drink it. So cheers, everybody. Thanks again, Sean. Let's see what it has to offer. I'm going in for a third sip before I even say anything because I'm loving it. I'm speechless. For those of you out there who know how much I talk, I'm speechless. It's as good as I remember it. I will say right up the front, or right up the front, right off the bat, this is not a five out of five beer for me. And the only reason I'll say that is because this is crazy sweet. A bit too sweet. That said, freaking phenomenal. Like, see, in the aroma, you, you got all those uh, characters that they list in the ingredients that I talked about. But in the, the flavor, it's not <clears throat> as pungent of all those, all those flavors, but they're still there. It's such a cohesive beer. It's, it's right, let me go back one more sip just to compose myself. Yeah, right up front, bunch of vanilla and chocolate. As it passes through the palate, a little bit of that, like I said, bittering, slightly roasted coffee comes to the middle of it. Kind of offsets the sweetness a bit, but then it finishes with a huge blast of like caramel, um, that cookie dough flavor that, again, I wouldn't necessarily say is cookie dough because it, it says it <laughs> in the whatever press release that I read. And on top of here, it's saying natural graham cracker flavoring and caramel and all this stuff. I wouldn't say it's cookie dough but it has a dessert-like presence to it. Uh, it finishes quite sweet, as I said, but I really don't care too much about the sweetness other than, again, it's not going to get a 5 out of 5 just because of the sweetness. Uh, but it's everything that it says it is. It, it really, it, you read the description here on the can, you read the press release, whatever, it's a pastry stout, and it's so well done. That's what Omnipolo is known for, is their pastry stouts. And I've had the No before, absolutely awesome beer. And having this one now, I just want to try more. I want to try some of the Noah variants. I want to try some of the, the other beers they do, uh, other pastry stouts, and just their beers in general. It's fantastic. But anyway, back to the beer. I'll, I'll try to uh, dig a little bit deeper here and then give you guys my final thoughts and ratings on my stuff. Body, it's like <sighs> medium full. If I was Paul over at PA Brew News, I would call this a bit thin. It is a bit chewy and thick, but not to the level that I expect with the flavors here. So I'd want like a straight full-bodied, super thick and chewy beer. It's close, but not all the way. Still, I, I'm not disappointed with the mouthfeel and the body. Paul would be. Mouthfeel itself, though, slightly creamy. Um, a little bit of a slick oil component there, slightly soft. I cannot complain about the body and mouthfeel at all. Um, outside of, like I said, just a slight more, if it was slightly more visco uh, viscous, if there's a bit more viscosity there, I'd be happy, but I'm not disappointed. Uh, but yeah, just this, there's not a lot to say about this. It's super complex, but at the same time, they're telling you what it is. And it translates right into the get last. There's nothing like, oh, you know, this and that. No, there's there's graham cracker, although not in abundance for me. There's caramel, there's chocolate, uh, there's cookie dough, there's vanilla, there's there's chocolate, there's everything. 
and it's so well done, so cohesive, and so damn good that I love this beer. I think it's awesome. Uh, so rating-wise, I'm not going to give it the 5 out of 5 that uh, a lot of you might think I should just because of how much I like it. I'm going to give it a 4.75 out of 5 just because of the sweetness. This can is a bit much, actually. I prefer this in 12-ounce cans like their Noah. Um, that extra 4 ounces is probably a bit too much. I Actually, I probably want to drink half of this. 8 ounces would be ideal for this. It is an after-dinner dessert beer, and that's what I want from this. Uh, aside from the, the sweetness being a bit too much, uh, this is an awesome beer. This is one of the best pastry stouts I've ever had, and I wish I could get this here locally in the Western New York area. Luckily, I have uh, awesome friends like Sean that hooked me up. Once again, thank you very much, Sean. So yeah, 4.75 out of 5 for the Pedramus uh, from Omnipolo. Like I said, that, that label art is awesome on that can. I like it. Uh, if I don't know if this is kicking around in Ontario at all in any LCBOs. I think this was available late last year, uh, early this year, so it's probably gone by now. Hopefully they rebrew it again, and hopefully they rebrew it in Toronto. So uh, for those of you who missed out on this, can get uh, you know grab a can at some point, and hopefully they brew it again, uh, and, and they do it in the U.S. at some point, or at least import it to the U.S. because this is a fucking fantastic pastry stuff. So anyway, that does it for another beer review here on the Beer Patrol. Appreciate you guys stopping by. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. If you do one thing, though, throw some comments in the comment section. And uh, let me know, have you had this beer? Have you had any of Omnipolo's other beers? What do you think about pastry stouts? Um, if you've had this beer, though, I'd be curious to hear what you think. Because, like I said, this is one of the best beers uh, that I've had this year, without question. One of the best beers I've ever uh, had the pleasure of smelling. The aroma on this, again, top five of all time. Just amazing. And uh, yeah, so that's it. I'm done. We're moving on. See you in the next one. Cheers.